Martin, and welcome back to another video. So, the Canal and River Trust have invited us to the Bingley Five Rise Locks. The 250 years old this year. Can you imagine? 250 years old. Anyway, we've had the privilege of looking around the locks and we're going to go up on a canal boat. Right, so here we are, Bingley Five Rise Locks. We've also got Roy here today and we've got the drain maestro, Marcus from Sheffield. But look at it, Bingley Five Rise Locks, incredible. Can you imagine building a canal and being faced with that incline in front of you? So it's quite a feat of engineering. So we're going to get some good shots for you. We're going to go on a boat trip up the locks and we're also going to get some experts from the Canal and River Trust to speak to you. Marcus, it's quite an incline. I'll race you. So this week we've headed north northeast to Bingley just outside Bradford to take a look at the Bingley Five Rise Locks. And on the day we're filming, the locks are 250 years old. Constructed in 1774, they're on the Leeds Liverpool Canal. You can see according to this map the progress over the years of the canal and how long it took. So this is Ruth, Heritage Advisor for the Canal and River Trust. Ruth, I think you're going to correct me, but am I right in saying that James Brinley designed the Five Rise? Uh, I am going to have to correct you on that because I think all credit needs to go to John Longbotham, who was a Halifax-born man. He was one of Smeaton's pupils. He was employed to survey the route. So the 1770 route was uh, surveyed by John Longbotham, who was rubber stamped by Brinley. To the person that should be credited with this is John Longbotham. Right. And of course, there's the drop, if you can see it. And look at that drop down there, down to the... Uh down to the canal below. You can see how the locks are just like steps down the hill. There's no ponds in between the locks. Um, they're the steepest set of locks in the country. They take the canal up or down, which way, whichever way you're looking, 59 feet over 320 feet. So I'm here with Philippa, Nigel and Sue, and they're uh, volunteers for the Canal and River Trust. They operate the locks. Hello guys, so you, you volunteer for the Canal and River Trust. How long have you been volunteering for? Uh, this is my third season. Your third season? Third so season. if anyone wanted to volunteer and do what you do, what would they need to do? If they go on the uh, CRT website and then they sign up as a volunteer, and there are loads of different things that they could do. It doesn't just have to be a lock keeper. They could be helping with the gardening or anything, anything, loads of different jobs. And then you go on training courses. Some are online and some are held in person uh, at a depot. And then you work underneath the auspices of a, of a, a team leader. It never ceases to amaze me that these guys thought, you know, what a good idea it would be to build a canal from Liverpool to Leeds, and never mind that the Pennines are in the way, we'll just go over the top of them, you know? <laughs> well, that's what they thought yeah, in those yeah, days, wasn't incredible. it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd never seen these locks before. We looked, and I said to my mate Roy over there, I said, how the hell would you even consider yeah, exactly. trying to get water up there? It's, yeah. a, it's an incredible feat. Amazing, amazing. Yeah. And, and all down to the hard work of all the people who did it, all the digging, all the navvies who came here and and worked you know, non-stop, seven days a week, for years and years and years, digging this out. Yeah, navvies don't get mentioned, do they, navvies? No, 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 they don't. True. So that opens the paddle, water goes through, boat goes down. Away we go. I thought I could come up 
absolutely right. one-handed then. Roy's lost weight already. <laughs> One of the things that obviously we love about this is that you see the biowash that runs all the way down. That's taking excess water from the top of the locks all the way down and putting it down below here. At the side of each sort of like flight on the locks, when the water gets to here, this will suddenly be full of water running down here to the biowash. So I want to show you now. And then when the this bit fills up with water, it overflows. Come look at this. And it runs down here and joins the biowash there. Also, we've spotted a little stream over there. There's a little stream over there that runs underneath the canal and Marcus is going to get some shots from the other side where it comes out because we can't get to that bit over there the little valley there where the stream is but Marcus will get some shots from the other side Marcus, yeah. go and get them shots He's not climbing a fence You're not climbing a fence are you? But you can see down there where he's going how the little river comes out there There you go, it's called New Mill Gill. So this is Stuart from the Canal and River Trust. Stuart, could you tell us what you do, please? Yeah, I'm the um, Heritage and Environment Manager for the Yorkshire North East region of the Canal and River Trust. Um, by background, I'm an ecologist, so that's, I, was, I used to look after the, the wildlife of the canals. You were saying about this being a wildlife corridor, Stuart, is that, that right? Yeah, one thing about canals is, as well as being a, an excellent corridor for people, um, they're an excellent corridor for wildlife. They provide an excellent traffic-free route that links up other excellent areas for, for wildlife, other um, uh, wildlife hotspots, if you like. Um, at Bingley here, we've got Bingley Bog, which is a, a site of special scientific interest. And all the way along the Leeds-Liverpool Canal corridor, we've got areas that are um, really important for wildlife. And the canal allows wildlife to move safely things like really obscure things like liverworts and mosses and lichens that not many people know about but they're still really important a really mm. important part of the ecosystem mm. celandines which are, are beautiful little yellow flowers you know it just take a bit of time look into the water you'll you, you know you'll see the fish swimming past yeah. you know and and it just it is really rewarding just stopping taking a bit of time looking around you and listening well, I'm starting running soon, so when do I need to start avoiding the, the dragonflies? Is it May, June? Um, you'll, you'll see the first ones, depending on the weather. Nice thing about dragonflies, if you study dragonflies, it's no point in going out if it's wet and cold. Yeah. It needs to be warm and sunny. So as soon as the weather starts warming up, you'll get the early dragonflies emerging. So probably beginning of May. Right. So obviously it was quite a feat of engineering, 1774, late 1700s. This was seen as an absolute marvel. When it opened, 30,000 people turned up to, to look at it and marvel and splendour. Remember when we did the Ponticilti Aqueduct? Well, that was like looking up in the sky and you know seeing boats up in the sky. This was something to behold, water and boats going uphill. So it really was at the time, this was really cutting edge stuff. People had never seen anything like this before. Today is the 21st of March, 2024. In the, on the 21st of March, 1774, that was the day it opened so we're here to the absolute day that it opened the local militia fired the guns into the air to celebrate the first boat going through hi how are you doing my name's sean mcginley i'm the regional director for the canal and river trust in yorkshire and the northeast brilliant sean a lot of obviously i've done a lot of canals is there a local river that we can put our finger on that you look after in this area the rivers we look after are over to the eastern side of, of the region, so we've got a bit of the Ouse, uh, we've got a bit of the River Rare. But they tend to be down in the lowlands rather than up here in the hills. So across on this side we've got the Leeds, Liverpool, Rochdale and Huddersfield going up into the Pennines and then the River Start and the lowlands further east you get. Do you look after the Rochdale? We do look after the Rochdale, we do. And that's my local canal, brilliant. Fantastic. I'm planning a trip and I don't know if I've bitten off more than I can chew. I think we're going to cycle from where I am, which is around the Chadderton area, up towards Hebden Bridge. Okay, yeah, yeah. So it'll be a nice trip there. Eh? It will be a great trip, but I'm hoping I can do it because I've, I've looked it on the map and it looks quite... Um, well, we'll see. Train back, I think. Train back. 
<laughs> no, well, the good thing about canals, except when you get to a lock, is the canals are flat, so yeah. the towpaths are pretty good. Which yeah. only when you get to the odd lock that uh, you have to go up a bit. But I, uh, some, be. some of the best routes are along canals. So yeah, you'll be fine. You'll be fine. Life's better by water. Stop at the odd pub and you'll be... You'll oh, be, definitely, yeah. You'll, you'll, you'll uh, be helped along your way, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, thank you very much for speaking to us. It's nice to meet you and see um, who's in charge of all this. That's brilliant. One of the things I love is uh, the way they've curved this, because it didn't need to be curved. It could have just been a sheer drop. But obviously they've put a little bit of a... All this is dressed stone here. You can see the markings on here where it's been uh, chipped by the stonemasons. I am looking for some masons' marks, but I can't see any. What a beautiful, nice little touch that they've put this curve in. And you imagine they've had to dress a curve into these as well. Um, just on the little bind washes here, if you go back, Marcus, can you get these here? Can you see down here? There's little uh, holes in there, so I think that's had a bit of a, a, gra a grate on or a little fence there or something, perhaps originally, uh, that's now gone. But I'm just looking for detail and things to show you that you would normally miss. Fascinating. And you can see the way the bottom part of the lock is kind of stone. And then you've got the lock, the lock gates in there. I think some, the, some of these lock gates are like the tallest lock gates in the country. Just down below, down, uh, I want to say downstream, but for want of a better word, but just down behind the camera is another set of locks called Bingley Three Rise. So if you think of it, there's eight locks, the five rise here and, and another three down there. So you think of the scale of the hill that they had to, to get the canal up, it's absolutely incredible. Now, if you do visit Bingley Five Rise Locks, and I highly recommend it for a day out, even if you're not boating, just go and take a look. There is a jolly good tea shop just situated at the top of the locks. Uh, we had a pot of tea for two and, of course, an egg tea. I didn't film it, but we did go in there and it was absolutely wonderful. Put your back into it. <laughs> Well done. <laughs> so we've got Anne here from the YouTube channel, Trekking and Exploration. We've done a few videos with him now. And we've got Mr. Canals himself, David Cruz in the cup. Nice to finally meet you, sir. Likewise. Lovely. Yeah, about blooming time. Yeah. <laughs> so there you go. So let's take a look at these locks. So now it's our turn to go on a boat and go up the locks. We're going up. You've seen boats coming down, we're going up. So we're going on this one. Uh, away we go. Mark, Marcus and Roy are already on. Oh, very nice, very nice. Right, so one of the things I want to find out is when we start going up the locks there, as you can see, I want to find out how much water is in each step going down because obviously the water's constantly moving down. A big issue with canals is running out of water, so they're quite often built feeder reservoirs to feed them. So well, that'll be one of the questions I'll be asking because you've seen how much flow is on when they open those lock, uh, lock gates. So I didn't find out the answer to my question, my probably ridiculous question, how much water do the locks consume when a boat goes up or goes down? But it is relevant because, you know, this is one of the things they had to think of when designing locks like this. Any locks, really, water consumption, because you're moving vast quantities downhill. So you've got to think about feeding water back into the canal system. Anyway, tea and cakes were laid on when we were on the boat, which was always a bonus. Look at this. French coffee. Always having one of his French coffees, like his French girls. Anyway, where were we? Ah yes, entering the locks. I'm going to let you have this experience, the experience we had of entering the locks and going up the five rise, get you some shots. These are some of the, like I say, some of the biggest lock gates in the country, one of the deepest locks in the country. Quite an intimidating thing when you're on a boat. You'll see what I mean. Oh, 
Okay, so as the boat goes up, you have to be careful that the rear fender there doesn't get caught on any of the bolts in the um, in the lock gates because if it did, it got wedged underneath. As the water level rose, we stay put and we'd end up getting going underwater. As you can see, this stuff has been working for the last 250 years. Right, so behind us we've got another boat coming through. I didn't know you could do this. So as a non-boat person you can hear the engine revving. I'm guessing it's a bit of a balancing act keeping the boat just in the right position in the lock. Is that right Skipper? Correct, yes. Captain. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I've keep both ends clear. Alright, you've done this before then? Just a few times. Nice one. I feel very safe in your hands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> So eventually we emerged from the locks and we went a short way just up the canal just to do a quick turn round and come back towards the locks. Not before we'd seen some familiar people along the way. You should join us and do a canal video. <laughs> they're quite good, you know, they're quite popular. Is that where all the real YouTubers are at? That's where they're all at. And you're feeling at home, aren't you, because you're in Yorkshire? Yeah. Have you ever been to this bit of Yorkshire before? No. Hey, hey, hey. Right, so there you go. 250 years ago to the day that the Bingley Five Rise locks opened. It's been a privilege to come here today to take a boat up the locks and to meet and speak to all the people from the Canal and River Trust that has uh, filled us in on all the information that they have done. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and we'll see you in the next one. So bye for now. You have got a choice in there <laughs> or, or you run down, run down the hill. <laughs>